All right, you guys, welcome to Boss Bitch Radio. We have another episode that we're going to dive into competition-y things with you today. I have my lovely co-hostess, Amanda Glitters. Amanda Glitters on board today. And today's episode is going to be about choosing your competition suit. Now, I know we've done an episode like this already before. Yes. But we're going to refresh it. We're going to talk some more shit and, and get into the details of how to pick a suit, when to pick a suit, colors that are great, things to avoid, things to consider. If you haven't lost all the weight, do you order your suit, right? Like lots of frequently asked questions, things that we hear often, and also things that we've seen with yeah. ourselves, competitors, and everything in between, right? Yeah. All right. So let's dive in. One main question we get. I have a question. Okay. How many suits do you have? Have you had? Honestly, I have I have two figure suits and I have two bikini suits. <laughs> uh-huh. And one of them I haven't even opened the bag for my <laughs> suit. And it is a which we're going to be sharing like our favorite um suit maker which is Toxic Angels bikinis. And we'll have everything linked up in the show notes for you as well. But I do have a suit that I haven't even, not even opened. I don't know where it's at, but it there's a story behind that. I wanted you to open it and you told me no. So I just let it be. But yeah, I have two suits and I still really love my leopard suit. Yes. I can't not with that. Yeah. Which we'll talk about <laughs> fabrics and colors and all that fun stuff. But just side note, the reason why I have not opened that suit is because last year I was in prep to compete and try to switch to the bikini division as a bikini pro. Um, Lost 20 pounds. I was like 140 pounds. I was ready to like continue the process of of leaning out, right? Because I started, it was like 160 some odd pounds. And I ordered my suit in that journey and it came after I decided I was no longer going to compete. So I just... It makes me sad. Like I just I want to open it, but then I know if I open it, I'm going to probably want to compete again. Just Uh, saying. uh, (laughs) I think that's a reach. That's a far reach. It's a big far reach, (laughs) but it'll like tug at my heartstrings and then I'm just going to be like, I'll have FOMO. And I just I'm like, maybe someday, but not right now. Okay, so I think first thing we should kind of talk about because you did say, right, you have two figure suits and you have two bikini suits. And I also have two wellness suits. Yeah. So there's differences? There are differences. (laughs) That's actually really great. I I think that's where we should start. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go for it. Okay. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to like talk a little bit about wellness because that's obviously the thing that I know the most. Um, You know, there's lots of different ways that we can do this. I know that we've been seeing a lot. Well, maybe not as much this year, but I still kind of see them a little bit is they do the wired Underwire. Underwire Mm -hmm. bras um, as a top. You can also see the triangle ones that are typical. Um, They also, Toxic Angels came out with a molded cup, um, which is exactly what I did last year with mine. And the Tatas as the new girls, they were looking fire. So it was a good look. It was a good look. Um, You know, the bottoms, there's also different cuts and different bottoms. So the one thing that you'll really notice between the two is you can do beads um, like diamonds or rhinestones on the sides. I particularly did not. So I did fabric sides. The reason that we did that, though, is obviously if you've been watching, you've been listening, you guys know that I've lost a lot of weight, especially when I get on stage. So we have ways of hiding some of that extra skin that you know, skin doesn't really go away. Even when you lose all the weight, it kind of almost looks a little bit worse. Yeah. I didn't want to say that. Well, I know, but worse, but not. It just, it hangs more. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was the way that we kind of got around the fact that I have a lot of loose skin on my lower belly, especially when I'm super lean and ready for show. Um, Obviously, you know, with the tops, they do have the rhinestones up here. You can even get the rhinestones in the back. Um, and then the back to the bottoms, though, there is a bunch of different cuts for the booty. And technically, since, you know, our team typically has really great glutes, we always go with the micro. Yes. Typically. 
But, you know, this is always going to be person specific because I know there's all different kinds of cuts. Um, I think they go micro, uh, mi mini, there's all different ones. And, you know, even different bikini makers will have different names for all of their suit cuts in the back. Um, I think one thing also to kind of like touch on the difference between a bikini bottom and a wellness bottom is that typically a wellness bottom is like a V. Mm -hmm. So it'll come down into a V instead of like a scoop. Um, and then for me, I did not do that, right? Um, because I needed a little bit more fabric in the front. If you're looking at girls, some of these bikini girls, um, even these wellness girls, like they have really flat lower bellies. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't. So I needed a little extra fabric there on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And um, going from there, you know, it just, it fit me like a glove. You know, the funny thing is about that last suit is I I ordered it much before right. I was ready. Yeah. But we'll get into that later. But honestly, I'm, I, I have their website pulled up too, just so we can kind of touch all the points that are important. Um, but one thing that we hear often is if clients have C-section scars or they do, they do have loose skin, um, you know, from losing a considerable amount of weight that should not stop you from competing. Okay. We've done, we've, we've worked some magic with clients that have loose skin, Amanda being one of them. And that's and like, can we just touch on the fact of stretch marks? Yeah. Listen, bitch, everybody, not everybody, but Jen Dory, Jennifer <laughs> motherfucking Dory, Olympian winner, the Olympia winner. Okay. The bikini Olympia, which if you're not sure what that is, that is like the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. She just won last weekend. Yes. Has stretch marks. Everybody. Like, it's, a, it's, it's a thing. Your body grew. OK, your right. body was growing. And maybe even when you were a kid, you got these right. Like it's not necessarily because of weight gain or weight loss. Um, You know, it. everybody has stretch marks. And if you don't, girlfriend, fucking good for you. Yeah. Good but for you. The reality of it is, is I, I really want people to not use that as a reason why they can't compete because I have stretch marks. I have stretch marks on my stomach. But for the bikini bottoms, they actually have several different um, cuts, cuts and coverages. So they have like a regular, they have a high front. So it comes up an extra high. They also have, um, extra high plus as plus plus they have a high <laughs> hip. So these are things that you want to consider. If you do have loose skin, if you do have stretch marks, if you do have a C-section scar and also helps if you know that like you either you have a long torso or a short to torso and things like that because like one of my athletes that's competing this weekend she started sending me her posing videos in her competition suit and I was like oh no 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 you gotta hike that suit up like oh, it yeah. was like low riding and it made her have this weird proportionate look so you really want to make sure your coach sees you in your suit Yes. Uh, and you have that discussion ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the funny thing about this is that typically people are like, oh, you know, like my hip, that side of my bikini should be on my hip. No, your bikini should be hiked all the way up to your 80s waist. Almost like typically my goal is to get mine above my hips, mm -hmm. above my hip bones. And then we either glue that shit down <laughs> or we tape it down, whatever we got to do to get it to stay. Um, but you know, the funny thing about saying long torso is we didn't realize I had a long torso until I started getting leaner mm -hmm. and you're like, you have a really long torso. And I was like, I'm five foot. How do I have a long torso? Your torso is oddly long. <laughs> you have an oddly long. It's For like a small it's person. Like, yeah. It's so, so long. Um, but again, we were able to sort of manipulate the look by adjusting your suit properly and then also ordering the right suit so we could maneuver with loose skin and kind of cutting and pasting. Yeah. Uh, Frankenstein. Carpet, carpet tape and like Frankenstein and, and, and pasting you in. Yeah. So the other part is um, tops, right? The tops, which we kind of covered a little bit, but just to go in depth a bit more, do you have implants? Do you not have implants, right? That's a situation. Wait, 
You do not have to have implants. I was just going to say that. <laughs> to compete. You do not have to have implants to compete. No. Is it common that you see a lot of bikini girls and competitors? Sure. But I think even just women in general just have implants. A lot of times. Yeah. I, not, you know I what? mean, not a majority, but it, it's, I mean, it's a, it's, it's climbing. The one thing that I really notice, especially like just because I did it as well, is typically when you go through your first prep, you've lost so much body fat. You're like, oh, my boobies are going to come back. No, bitch. They are not coming back. Mm -mm. And I hate to be honest about that, but it's true. So typically what I see is a lot of girls, they'll go ahead and they'll be like, okay, they had their first season. And then they're like, whoa, these boobies need some help. And then typically they'll go in, you know, within the next year or, you know, even if they don't compete for a couple years, they eventually get some implants just to kind of like, you know, feel big boobies are fun. Yeah. And honestly, just to prove that point, if you look at the top five Olympians, um, you have Jen Dory and she has implants. Yes. Maureen has implants. Issa, I believe has implants. Um, Loralee does not. No. And why do I keep forgetting? Oh, Ashley Kaltwasser. I don't know if she does. I think so. Yeah. Those boobies have looked the same for a long time. Yeah. So there are a lot of ways that you can give that voluminous look in your bikini top. If you have lost a lot of weight and you have no interest in getting implants, there are tons of YouTube tutorials, yeah. you know, YouTube that shit on I think, how to do it. I think the cut also really helps as well. Mm -hmm. You know, there's lots of different cuts that they have. They have a regular, they that's like a triangle. They have a moderate slim, which is a little bit more smaller on the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's a little bit more for like moderate or larger bust. They have a long slim, um, which is like it'll bring the fabric up higher and then it's recommended for ladies with extra large implants. Yeah. And then you have the, the wellness. Bra top. The bra top. The underwire, which I feel like we're moving away from a little bit more as I we're seeing yeah. the big shows like the Arnold and the Olympias and Pittsburgh Pros and things like that. You're seeing less and less of the underwire in wellness. Yeah. That's what I'm noticing. Yeah. I think it's kind of phased out. I think it was a thing for a, probably a couple years. I mean, maybe one or two. Um, then now it's kind of looking like. You kind of want to go away from it. Right. Now, let's talk about the rhinestones, right? Because your suit is is literally can be customized from, I mean, from the 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 strings, the back Everything. string, Everything. the center stones, the stones on top of the fabric, the type of fabric. Like, it can get really intricate, obviously pricey, the more bells and whistles <laughs> that you have. But... I wanted to actually bring this up for this episode. I was watching the recap from the Olympia last night that James uh, James Ayote from Team Atlas did. Right, which huge shout out to him because I fucking love him. He's like I I want to get him on the podcast so bad. Um, <laughs> and he actually told me earlier this year that after the Olympia to like hit him up. So I need to like poke at him a little bit and see if he'd be willing to come on. But he talks about one of his athletes that competed at the Olympia. I think she got like 14th or something like that. And he just like mad talked shit on her suit. Like, he, didn't, he didn't like it. No. Okay. He hated it. He's like, it looks like a Walmart suit. I think he said, or like a Ooh. cheap suit. If you compare her to like the winners, like she did it like budget friendly, like don't skimp on the suit. Right. So <sighs> yeah, I mean, you're in the pro ranks. It's a totally different ball game. Um, but again, even as an amateur, like something that he said that I felt was very important is like you spent the money on training, you spent the money on diet, on supplements, on registration. You went 30 or however many weeks in your prep, and then you're going to go Walmart on your suit. Listen, y'all bitches spend a shitload of money on your wedding dresses usually, right? This is your motherfucking wedding for your muscles. Okay. It is the one day. <laughs> it's the one day that you will wear the suit all day long, really yeah. probably longer than you will wear your wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can actually reuse no, that's it. Absolutely true. And you can reuse it, right? Like I remember um when I was competing, you know, several times in one year and going to the athlete uh like the seminars that Sandy Williamson hosts right before or like, you know, the when, head head judge. The head head judge. If you don't know who she is, she's the head head judge. She makes all the rules yes. basically. And she said she had repeated this often in those workshops is like wear your suit until the stones fall off, right? Like if you invest in a really nice suit or whatever, 
we aren't, no offense, but we're not going to remember who right? you are, right? Like they'll remember the pros and right that kind of a thing. That's totally different, but wear that shit. Like don't feel like you have to switch suits. Now, some girls really like that. They like, oh, I worked hard. I deserve this. And if you have the budget and you want to do that, by all means, however, it's not necessary. No, no. And I I feel like even in like the amateurs, especially, especially if you're somebody that's going to kind of do the circuit or do multiple shows in a row, wear your same suit. Yeah. Wear your same suit. Because if you go out and Sandy's there and she saw you, maybe you got sixth. You go out again, you look better. Maybe you're going to get like third, second, or even first if yeah. you had enough time to improve your physique. And then she's like, ooh, I remember her. And then boom, you're already higher in the ranks. Right. Now, to kind of take a couple steps back to what we were talking about, when it comes to the attachments, you can customize that. And it's really up to you, like how fancy you want to get. I mean, there is some of that that I would consider like a, genetically your frame and, and stuff like that. Like if you're a very tiny, petite person, I wouldn't do gigantic, huge, large strings and straps and, and things like that. Um, but they do have different options, different rows of rhinestones, different. You can get a single row. You can get a double row. They have bigger triple rows. Um, they have ones that are wavy gravy. They have ones that look like a ladder. Like there's all different kinds of connectors. And I think that's kind of my favorite part. Yeah, it is. It's super yeah. fun. The other thing that I will mention and caution to people, and I don't know if you've seen this backstage or have had to help an athlete who's struggling with this, but one of the new trends with the suits, well, it's not really new, new, is that the back strap, right? Like the bathing suit strap type thing in the back yes. is all rhinestones. And while I think that that is beautiful, it's challenging because unless it also has strings for you to tighten it, if it's just a hook and clasp, I wouldn't go with that. It's just challenging because you don't know how much weight you're going to lose. You don't know where it's going to come from. And the last thing you want is like under boob, right? I also don't like that. I mean, I think it's beautiful. Trust me. You guys should know. Amanda Glitters, I love anything that fucking shines, right? Mm -hmm. But your hair is going to get caught in it. And that then your too. back pose is going to look funky because your hair is going to be all like bundled up in it and it's not going to lay flat. And I'll tell you right now, my favorite shot from the last show was my back pose because my hair just like, it looked great. And I was like, that's a good booty too. Yeah, so. it's, it's wonderful. So yeah, that is another thing too. It can get kind of caught in there, uh, which is never fun. Um, one thing just not on suit topic, but kind of related is when you get your suit, I would wait to buy your jewelry because Ugh. the rhinestone colors, they're, they're, they vary. There's right? a difference. There is. There's like AB stones and hollow graphics. AB. Yeah. AB is like the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Hollow graphic ones. I think yeah. they, they shine a different color and then they have the regular ones that just shine like a diamond. Yes. There's definitely different ones. So I think it's good for you to wait until you get your suit so you can kind of see what type of rhinestones, what shape they are, because sometimes they're round, sometimes they're square, right? They have different patterns yeah. and then match your jewelry accordingly. Right. Like um, with the, the leopard bikini, I had the rhinestones that kind of weaved in and out. Mm. And I happened to actually find an earring that absolutely matched. Not that the judges cared, but, you know, I like to match. Yeah. And it made me feel good. And I felt like this was a whole ass situation. A whole look. Definitely. Now, to, to go back and get a little more in-depth on the bikini bottom thing, also another thing that um, – I, I caution you is to be careful with a cut of your bottoms and make sure that they are indeed flattering for your physique. Even when you're trying it on or whatever, you just kind of have an idea of what your body's going to look like. Maybe ask your coach if you're not sure. But again, to go back to James's video, he was saying like Ashley Kaltwasser always wears this like tea back, which I noticed it at another show. And I was like, I just don't like that. It is not... It, it like comes up, it almost looks like a thong, which I know that most normal people probably think that these things are thongs anyways, but they're not. Technically, okay, you guys, these are not thongs. Okay, I know they look like thongs, but <laughs> they are not thongs. Yeah. Um. But I, so I'm, I'm not thinking exactly from her back post. I did watch it, but like just to kind of hit on that, you know, I'm assuming with the tea back, what it does is it doesn't kind of like arch over her glute. That's and exactly so it, what he said. It makes it look... Like it's kind of cut off. Yeah, it's it flattens her glutes out at the top. And it's just not 
it's it's i think her i think she was the well definitely the only one in the top five olympia that had that cut oh yeah um and clearly she got third place so clearly she's doing something right i mean the rest of her physique is fantastic it didn't really throw it off too much but if you're unless you're ashley Catwasser, you can't if i can do that shit okay uh and even then i honestly think it is it kind of hurts the look of her physique if I'm if I'm being honest. And it, it could have been one of the reasons why she plays lower. Yeah. So the bottom cuts and, and she goes through a different company, um, but the bottom cuts through Toxic Angels are very much on par with NPC and IFBB, right? What they're looking for. So their smallest coverage is like a micro, like an X micro. And that is mainly for IFBB pros, right? Um give or take. It just depends. Uh, at the, at the end of the day, it really depends on how your body looks with the bottoms on. Right. Then they have a micro pro, which is, um, on their site says it's more for a petite frame. So girls who are under five, one. So it's very explicit. Hi, that's me. Yeah. It's very explicit on their website. Very well put together in terms of how to shop online for your suit, which is kind of scary. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then they have the pro cut. It says it's their most popular and it's highly recommended bottom coverage. It's mainly for NPC. I think it's a safe, a safe choice. It's if a safe choice. If you're unable to actually go in and try on something like this, I think it's a very safe choice. Yes. And then they have uh, Brazilian, which they're saying not really recommended for NPC, but uh, has it has a little more coverage. Uh, I would say, and it's got the ruching. I mean, they all have the ruching. Yeah. And then the last one is mid coverage. Um, and that is more for different federations, right? Because you don't just have NPC and IFBB. You have some natural federations and things like that. So make sure you pick the right one for the federation you're competing in. We have the most experience with NPC and IFBB, but um, but that's also a thing. I This is like making me want to get another suit, but not because I want to wear my other suit again. Your blue one. Yeah. Yeah. It's very beautiful. Yeah. But um, to go back now, we're talking a lot about bikini. We've talked a little bit about wellness. Right. But just to recap, the wellness bottoms, you're not seeing the fabric as much anymore. Like the all fabric. I haven't really seen a whole lot of that. I've been seeing most of these wellness girls doing the bottoms with the connectors. Right. So I don't know if that too is phasing out with the underwire or or what. I don't know. You're you're a lot more <laughs> involved in stocking the wellness division. I feel like what it is though is like so for me it's strategic. I think it's definitely a strategic move for anybody that's had a large amount of weight loss to continue to go with the fabric. Mm -hmm. If you are somebody that is like, nope, I've been pretty like on point. I've never been overweight. And you really like the look of the connectors, by all means, get the connectors. Because I'm really just using that as a way to kind of like hide things Mm -hmm. and make it look great on me. Yes. So again, even if it's not technically the current style, I would say it's still appropriate for the division because it has been in the division. So if you need that extra fabric to use carpet tape and tape yourself in and do all that, then do that, right? That's going to give you the best aesthetic on stage at at the end of the day. Right. And I'm going to assume, you know, like connectors versus not connectors is not going to make you place lower. Yeah. Your body and your physique and your look is going to be ultimately the most important thing. Definitely. Now, moving on, my favorite division. Are you no excited offense, about this now? No offense to the other divisions. Are you getting all hot? I am. <laughs> um, is the figure suits. Now, the if you're competing in the figure division, if and again, if you're if you're new here and you're just kind of like learning all the things, the divisions start with bikini. Now, bikini being the entry level, I guess, if you will. And I hate to even say that because it's still very competitive, but like when you're first competing, unless genetically, otherwise you're a freak and you have these legs <laughs> and, Hi. or I'm pointing to Amanda or, and, uh, or you've been in sports or athletics, or you, I don't know, you, you've been, been training, training for a really long time and you've built a solid body of muscle. Bikini is usually where most people are going to start. All right? right. Then we have wellness, which I personally, my opinion is based on genetics, right? In terms of who's going to be a good fit for that. And then you have the outliers who train to fit that division, but it takes some time. Um, And then the thirdly is going to be figure. So this is kind of like how the muscle development progresses. So you're going to have a little bit uh, of a different suit cut for figure, right? It's one piece, which is weird. But 
it's technically, technically two. You connect it in the back, so it's one piece. Yes, so it crisscrosses along the back and hooks um, the top, and it hooks to your suit bottoms in the back, okay? It's like a unitard. I don't so, know. <laughs> so just to kind of like, if you're listening and you're not like looking at this and you don't really understand, instead of your triangle top coming around and tying in the back, you don't tie it. You take one of the strings and it crisscrosses crosses to the other hip and you hook it in. There's a little hook in there. And then the other side is going to hook as well. Yes. And then it's like connected to the butt. Right. So I will actually see if I can get uh, Alexis to add some, my podcast manager Pictures? to add some photos. That'd be great. As we're talking about these things. And uh, that way you have a visual if you're watching this on the tubes. But um, figure bottoms are, they do have a di couple different cuts. And I think, again, this really depends um, on a couple things. Like what is your body composition? Um, and also like are you tall? Are you small? Are you petite? That kind of a thing. Um, but they, they're pretty standard, right? They do have some with fuller backs. Not my favorite. No, I, I have a, I have a competitor. She's in Canada right now and she has a couple of different suits because she's going to compete on a couple of different, um, categories, different, very different. It's a natural federation over there. Mm -hmm. So she sent me a couple of pictures and I saw one of her suits, her body, her, her prep this year, has been fucking amazing. Like she looks amazing. The thing was, is she put this suit on. It was a gorgeous color. She turned around and the butt was so big on her. I was like, you're covering it all up. Yeah. Don't do that. So that's I, a backup choice. Yeah. And I get that because if you've never competed before and you are looking at these suits, it's terrifying. Okay. <laughs> Cause you don't, like, you can't see the vision. Right. No, like we see it because we've done it and we've been there and we know. Right. But if you've never done it, you look at that and you're like, there's no way there's no way my body or my butt is going to fit in that. Right. Yeah. But again, you, if you are on track and you're you have a coach guiding you and you know the things and you're projecting your stage weight and everything, it's going to happen. <laughs> OK. And yeah. if you have, you know, your your backside is being judged. Right. And especially, I mean, in all divisions, but in figure, you know, it's your back and your glutes and your hamstrings and all the things. And you want to be able to showcase the shape of your glutes and all the work that you've done. And so sometimes that means a smaller bottom. Yeah. Now, if you are competing, this would be my like asterisk, like, like, except in these cases, right? If you are doing this as a bucket list goal, right. Yes. And you're just like, it's a transformation. Maybe you lose a lot of weight and you're, you know, you're not going to place. You're just like, no, I'm doing this because I lost a hundred pounds. Right. And I still, you know, I, I know that I'm not fit for like top five or whatever, but I want right. to get out there and just show off. Like I'm proud of myself type of a thing. We see a lot of people do that. Oh, right. I think, okay. Just to kind of like, I'm going to go off on a tangent a little bit. I think most folks, most folks, most folks think that everybody looks like the top five. No. 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 That's a no. Okay? Yeah. Most of these competitors don't look like top five. And that's okay. Yeah. You know, nobody says that you have to look a certain way to compete. You just have to look a certain way to win. Yes. That's the difference. Oh, I love that. Right? That's like a, such a good little. I just made that up. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, you actually don't. You don't have to look a certain way to compete. I mean, yeah, there's seen... no weight goal. They don't weigh you. All mm. they do is they see how tall you are. Right. And that's just to put you in different categories. So my point being is, let's say that you went un underwent a massive transformation uh, in your competing just as like a bucket list goal and you want a little more coverage because maybe you're not like stage lean. Um, I think a, a, a bigger bottom would be appropriate for that situation. Right. right? So yeah. that would be, you know, that would be another thing to consider. So they, you know, they take you through, they show you all the different connectors and it's styles. a little overwhelming. <laughs> it is definitely very overwhelming. But fun. Yes. Now, we we talked a little bit about the back ties. So I think we should spend like a couple minutes talking about that. They have the standard back ties, right, where you just pull the string, tie it like a regular triangle bikini top. They have the back connectors with the hooks that I was talking about that are like my least favorite. Yeah. Beautiful, Gorgeous. but not practical. I think if you aren't dialed in and know exactly how tight you need that, it's kind of a pain. Right. Then they have the back connector 
um, with, with the, the tie. ties. So the rhinestones plus the tie, right? Rather than just the rhinestones, which I think we're is okay great. with that. <laughs> I love that. And then they have another option, which is just a back hook, right? Listen, like a bikini top or a bathing suit top. Unless you are good at sewing, I wouldn't play with the ones that are the hooks. Basically, there's there's no real way for you to adjust that. You'll be sewing that thing like the night before trying to get it to fit. Yeah, don't you, do that. you don't want to be messing with that. Don't do that. So um, they will take you through the whole process. I, when I ordered my suit through Toxic Angels, they got on the phone with me. She was um, had me pull up my Instagram and she was like looking at my photos and like my hair color and all the things and then sending me ideas like, hey, I think this would be good. This suit cut, this bottom, this, that, that or the other. And then you give them their your measurements and all that. Now, one question we get often is, well, when should I order my suit? Yes. And <clears throat> I always try to encourage girls to wait until they're about 14 weeks out. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, because you don't want to wait too soon, right, to be too close to your show and then panic and like if it doesn't fit right and all those things. And then you don't want it too far out either. So there's sort of like a happy medium there. 14, 12, 14 weeks out is a good spot to order your suit. And the next question we always get is, well, how am I going to know if it's going to fit? Right. They will size it. They will size they it. They will size it. They, I think they actually don't ship it until you're like close no. to your show and then you resend the measurements because you they did don't. this. Yeah. So basically what happened, I got to go in store and actually like try stuff on. And I'll tell you right now, I was not anywhere ready. We weren't. I, can't, I went too. I can't wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post. I'm going to post the photo that Toxic Angels took of me um, that day. And it's so funny because I, it was a Frankenstein one, right? One, the top was pink. The bottom was green. The bottom was like closer to a figure bottom. Um, and then, so basically from there, what you do is you order, you pick all your rhinestones, you pick all the things. And then what they'll do is they'll ask you again, so far out from your show to resend your measurements. They actually did a really great thing for me is, um, that because I needed a special bottom, right? So she sent me my bottom before it was jeweled so mm -hmm. I can test it to make sure when they jeweled it, it was going to be fine. And it was amazing. It, it was, was gorgeous. Perfect. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. So they have a process. I mean, it's obviously not their first rodeo. They provide no. suits for Olympians and all these things. So they do a really fantastic job of making sure that it's perfect by the time it's show day. And you submit your measurements and all that through, the, um, you know, through, I think it's online and they'll then send you your suit. And I think you get your suit a few weeks before your show. Not you really. got yours the week of, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yours was a special circumstance. Not really. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I just want everybody to know, like, no matter what, you're going to get your shoot. You're going to get your shoot, your suit, right? I feel like I heard a story that one of the pros had lost their bikini mm -hmm. in like, flying and margaret which is the owner of toxic angels she literally like overnighted her a suit the next day i think it was laura lee yeah it was yeah. i don't remember who it was but i was like this is the kind of company that you want to work through to kind of get your your suit and feel like you know you're able to to make this this quote unquote bodybuilding wedding dress yeah definitely so you'll get your suit everything will be fine you don't need to know exactly how much you're going to weigh. They no. want a ballpark idea. And if you're working with a coach, they should be able to give you an idea of like, this is what we're looking at um, stage weight wise. And then that'll help them in, in kind of tailoring it for your body. Now, another thing that we haven't talked about is like suit colors and rhinestones. Like this is a very intricate Ooh, process. I know. I'm like, you know, I know man. it's a lot. Um, but it depends on how elaborate you want to get full scatter, you know, partial scatter. Um, so we're talking about stones. beads. We're talking about bead coverage, right? If you are like, you know, we say don't go Walmart, but they have some cheaper ones that have less rhinestones on them. And then it works up and up and up. And then they also have some that have patterns, you know, um, like if you look online, they have all different ones. It's ombre. They have a burst. They have, um, you know, they have the ones that look kind of like uh, the beads are in like a diamond uh, formation. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, the stones. They're yeah. like all the different colors. And then the best thing about this, too, is like if you are online and you want to like get real nitty gritty with this, you get to pick all of the beads. 
The stones. The yeah, stones. The, the colors. Yeah, yeah, the colors. And the thing about that too is that it really changes the color of your suit by the stones that you choose. Yes. So that is also something to think about when you are designing your suit. I'm going to tell you right now, I had her change mine because in the beginning I wanted an ombre, right? I wanted it to be, Mm -hmm. um, I wanted it to be like one color in the middle and then to shoot out and change to a different color. Well, I started thinking about it and I wanted like the AB, which is like the rainbow stones in the middle and then to go out into like a blue color. And then when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's going to look like a nipple. And so I called her up. All I had to do was tell her, flop that, right? Blue in the middle, white around the outside. And she crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing that I wanted to talk about is just you have to be careful with the placement of your stones. I would really look at what the top Olympians are wearing, quite frankly, yeah. or who, you know, who's the wearing, color. Yeah. The beads. The color. Yeah. The cut. Um, the Arnold, the Pittsburgh pros. I would look at what the top five winners are wearing. I'm going to tell you what you're not going to see. They're not going to be wearing white. They're not going to be wearing yellow. They're not going to be wearing leopard. Sorry. And I'm so and you might mad think, at all. You might that. think, well, well, I'm just going to be original. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> It works very, very rarely. Yeah. The physique has to be so phenomenal and undeniable that you could be like in a burlap sack that is rhinestoned (laughs) that (laughs) that they would, you know, choose you as the winner. But I'm, you know, we're being silly here, but honestly, I would look at what's working. I'll tell you right now, I've been asking for a white suit forever and she keeps telling me no. Yeah. And, And so did I. Right. I, I, that's something that I wanted was white or yellow yeah. or like a light coral or something like that. And there's a reason why you aren't seeing Olympians wear those. It's because it doesn't work well for bodybuilding on stage. I think the one thing we haven't really talked about is fabric. Yes. Fabric. So the color is going to matter, right? This is kind of why we're telling you another, a really great thing is like jewel tones. So anything that's like in a jewel tone is going to be great. That's why mine is blue. Um, You know, as much as I love my leopard suit, I don't think it was the best. Like the way that my tan contrasted to my suit was not a big enough contrast to make it look like I wanted it to. Yes. Right. Although I still love it and I would love to wear it again. So the other thing, too, is that with their fabrics, there's all different kinds. So like you can go with just like a regular, it's kind of like a bikini kind of fabric, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They have velvet. They have ones that if you um, pick your own fabric, they have ones that have like a little bit of like a sheen or kind of like a metal Mm -hmm. metal kind of on top. So it looks like a little bit. Metallic, yeah. Did you say velvet already? I did. Yeah, velvet. You've got the metallic. Um, I feel like your bikini that's hiding in the bag is velvet. It is velvet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know where she's at. I mean, I wouldn't have been opposed to do a reveal right I here. I know. And just not, not cry about it. I'm all looking around. Where's she at? I feel nope. like it's, I don't know. I feel like it's in the garage in a box because I just moved. <laughs> so, but yeah, there are so many different fabrics and you can look at the swatches and do all the things. But um, to what she was saying, like jewel tones are usually safe, right? Like purples, blues, greens. I don't know. The red. Of tone. Um, red. Red. But also, like, you have to consider your hair color, right? Skin tone, which you should be Oompa Loompa orange that day. I mean, everyone's pretty much almost the same color. Um, But, you know, redheads probably aren't going to be wearing a red suit. Green. Right? Yeah, green looks really great on redheads. Purple. Purple. um, You know, blondes tend to be able to pull off most most of of the the colors colors just fine. Um, But, again, look at the winners. What are they wearing? Look for girls who look like you in terms of same features, you know, hair and things like that, uh, color. So you can get an idea of like, well, yes, I don't look like Laura Lee Chapados, but she's got black hair straight. That's how I'm going to wear it. And she's wearing this color often. Right. And she's typically very pale. She's not very tan. No, she's not. Not in the off season. No, just when we're on stage. Are we all very, very tan? Very much so. Very tan. Yeah. So I think we covered everything that's like the most important Important. pieces of getting your suit designed and figured out like what's good, what's not good, what to avoid. 
Um, yeah, sure. You can you can find stuff cheaper through like eBay. Yeah, you can even um, I think there's places to rent a suit. Mm -hmm. However, if you're going to be doing this more than once, maybe you don't know in the beginning, but if you're going to be doing it more than once, buy the suit, buy the suit, yeah. buy the suit. And we'll link up everything in the show notes if you're interested in checking out the the company that we work with, which is uh, Toxic Angels Bikinis. And that uh, has a Z. Toxic Angels has a Z. Yes. Um, but we'll link that up. And the link there will take you to their site. You could check everything out. They have a lookbook there that you can download, a whole PDF you'll see that we actually use to reference a lot of what we're talking about today. And uh, I think you can put a deposit and all those things. So there's yeah. a way that you can start taking care of that now if budget is is a little bit of a concern. Um, but as you get ready to compete, this is something that you want to start thinking about. I feel like there was one thing we didn't say. Oh, how much are suits? Oh, yeah. Oh, that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, through through this site, I mean, there are different options. Like you can go pretty bare bones and probably get a suit for like 300-ish dollars. Yeah. Um, I, I think, know mine was like almost 700. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was in the sixes. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes we be bougie. Yeah. Another thing that I think is really great about Toxic Angels, and I don't know much about it yet, but I think there's like a like a a swap. Oh, yeah. Like you can you can put yours in. You can send yours in and they can change it a mm, little bit, I mm. think. OK. Or um, I feel like there was something else that I was looking at here on there. What did oh, the buyback program. The buyback program. Oh, what is that? Yeah. Go to extras. They yeah. have a trade-in. They have a buyback program. All kinds of things. Yeah. So I haven't really looked into that, but um, when you trade in an eligible Toxic Angels competition suit with our buyback program, you receive a store credit that you can use at their store. Great. So they're looking for suits made after 2018, bikini or wellness, um, and then they have their design designs oh, whatever that they're designs. looking for like full scatter rhinestones and things like that gently used must be clean and they will give you if it's i mean they have wow. anywhere from 275 to 360 dollar credit yeah so that's, that's like actually, half your suit yeah that's actually really great i'm glad that you mentioned that so yeah. yeah so check it out if you decide to purchase your suit through toxic angels use my name d-i-a-n-e diane diane as the promo code and um that my friends will save you 15 percent off so that's a little chunk of change yeah we ain't mad about saving money no that'll pay for especially on your something about that <laughs> yeah that'll that'll save you money and you can use it for your jewelry so um so check out that link and of course should you be interested in coaching that is oh. also something we do hi so hit us up for that. And um, yeah, I think we did it. We did. Yeah, that was good. It's it's a super fun part of the competition process and enjoy it. Like picking out the suit and like doing all the things. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoy the episode. Make sure to share this with one of your competition friends. Yeah. You know, maybe they need to be known about the suits. That would be super helpful. We would love you forever. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.